Tonight, our top story, tainted drugs, painkillers, cardiac medicine, antibiotics, you name it, all being recalled tonight by the Food and Drug Administration. The medication you're taking right now could be dangerous. The FDA says drugs produced by a compounding pharmacy in New Jersey, MedPrep Consulting, may be contaminated with mold. The FDA says the recall was announced after health care providers at a hospital in Connecticut observed floating particles later identified as a fungus in five bags of magnesium sulfate intravenous solution. Magnesium sulfate is in practically everything, as I mentioned, antibiotics, general and local anesthetics, cardiac medication, painkillers, labor-inducing drugs all of which were distributed to regional hospitals and several states. The FDA says it is working with officials in New Jersey and Connecticut to determine the scope of the con contamination at this time. And this comes months, you heard this story, after a New England compounding center distributed thousands of tainted steroid injections, which ultimately ended up killing 50 people. Joining me now with the details, Dr. Stephen Reisman, a cardiologist and director of the New York Cardiac Diagnostic Center. Doctor, welcome to the show. Hi. Here we go again. It's, it's less than five months later. We've got another case brewing here. People could be hurt. Why can't we fix this? I think part of the problem is you're dealing with federal versus state regulators. There's not strong regulation in this regard. Also in the last several years, hospital intravenous solutions have increased to almost 40% of them coming from these smaller, less regulated companies. So that brings up a good question because a lot of people are asking me, how do I know if I have one of these drugs? Where, do I, where would I get them? This is a problem you don't know because what you do is you go to your doctor who may be an alternative doctor using chelation therapy, it may be a hospital using intravenous solutions and anything going directly into the vein could be dangerous. And they get them from a middleman and the middleman gets them from the compounding. Wow. So it's really difficult and it's a big problem. I think this is just the tip of the iceberg. The tip of the iceberg. Could I call my doctor and find out if I'm getting this or if I'm in a hospital? Should I be asking if they're using these compound medicines? The scary part is they probably won't know where they're coming from. That's the scary oh, part. Oh my goodness. Well, that is scary. Now, I want you to hear what, the, uh, what David Miller of the International Academy of Compounding Pharmacists, the CEO, had to say. This was confounding to me. Compounding pharmacists, as he said, shouldn't need to adhere, shouldn't need to adhere to the same standards as drug manufacturers because they are so small. These pharmacists have answered primarily to state bar boards rather than the FDA. Should they meet federal standards? They should have the highest standards of regulation. These are medications or formulas going directly intravenously. They can kill you if they're not done properly. Look what happened in Massachusetts. 50 people died. These should be as regulated as major pharmaceutical companies. There's absolutely no doubt about it, and it's strictly a profit motive that's driving comments like that. Profit motive, yes, but don't you think the regulators bear some kind of responsibility here? After all, there are regulators here. They may be state regulators, but it's not like the government isn't assigned to monitor this. I can tell you that in 2007, the CDC Centers for Disease Control found that these smaller companies had less stringent regulations and lower quality control. There's no doubt this is a major problem that needs to be addressed. So what are people like you doing about this? Because you're right in the middle of this. If I have the opportunity, I try not to take medications from these smaller pharmaceutical companies. I try to find out where they're coming from. I refused once a medication from a compounding company and waited so we could get it from a major company. Maybe the pharmaceutical company should be required to get involved and take the load off some of these companies and who have you know, less stringent requirements. They seem like they've grown like Topsy. They used to be more popular and then they became less popular and now they are growing yet again. And now we have 17 different state laws beginning to make their way through state legislatures to try to answer to this question, but that could take a long time. What do you recommend to consumers to do right now? What consumers need to do is if they're getting any intravenous medication, they need to basically check with their doctors, check with the hospital and see where it's coming from if they can find out. Start raising the questions now. Uh, Dr. Steve, it was great to have you on. Thanks for Pleasure. joining us. Really great information and I appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you. you.